Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Chinese barbecue pork char siu. Well, today we're headed east for our barbecue and I couldn't be more excited. We're doing a very popular Chinese pork dish, char siu or Chinese barbecue pork. Now you've seen this around, I promise you have. It's that really red, sticky looking pork, incredibly delicious. It's sweet, it's salty, it's savory, that umami. We're gonna get in all those flavors today, some things that you're familiar with, some things you may or may not be familiar with, but before we do that, we're gonna trim out our pork. So what we're working with today is a Boston butt pork shoulder. Uh, you could use any fatty cut of pork for this recipe. In fact, pork belly is really delicious for char siu, uh, but this is what we're working with today. We wanna, get, uh, we wanna get away from the bone on this. So if you can, buy a boneless butt, or what you can do here is just go ahead and separate this out. I'm gonna use about five pounds of this meat on this nine pound butt. So once I come down into the middle of this crevice, I'm just feeling for the bottom of the, the blade bone, which is right here. And then once I get there, I'm gonna make a straight cut across. Now this is the portion I'll save for another use. You could smoke it just like it is, or you could trim that out and put it into your grind for sausage. And here we have the portion that we're gonna use for our Chinese barbecue pork today. I'm just gonna trim up a little bit of this stuff from the crevice, the stringy material. Clean the surface up a little bit here. I am gonna leave the fat cap on. This thin piece is just gonna burn up. So again, we'll put that in the grind pile. Shouldn't be a lot of work to do here. We we'll take some of the excess fat off the surface because there's plenty running through the center of this piece of meat. But from here, you're just gonna break this down into strips. I bet we get six-ish good strips out of this. We'll go first in thirds here. Now you check out the marbling on that, all that fat running through the center. That's gonna make for a really moist piece of pork in the end. Now you could leave these just like this, or you can go ahead and divide them again, which is what we're gonna do today. And I'll tell you the reason why is mostly because when it comes to char siu, I really like that sticky seasoning on the outside. And if we expose more and more surface area, we get more and more flavor. All right, so that's good to go. Now we're gonna prepare our marinade and sauce. Now the marinade and sauce, they're the same thing in this case. We're gonna be putting our pork into this marinade and letting it soak overnight to really drive those flavors into the pork. And then as the pork cooks, we're gonna have some reserved marinade or glaze at that point that will glaze over the top to get that nice stickiness on the outside. So we're starting off with a base of our Kim's Asian barbecue sauce. And uh, I'm doing this just to kind of save myself a couple steps here. If I wasn't using this Kim's Asian barbecue sauce, I'd be building a base of ketchup, hoisin, we'd put some sesame oil, uh, even extra ginger and garlic from what we're gonna add today. All things that are already in this sauce, which is why it makes it a great base for what we're doing here. So we're gonna add to that cup and a half of the Asian barbecue sauce, three quarters of a cup additional soy sauce, and three quarters a cup of pepper infused honey, just for a little extra kick. Next, we've got a half cup of Chinese rice wine, which is kind of hard to find, so you can also use dry sherry in this application. We've also got a couple teaspoons of fish sauce. And between that fish sauce and our fermented bean curd, that's where we get all of the umami. Now these are the special finds, the things you wanna go to the Asian store to look for. This is a red fermented bean curd, which sounds kind of weird, but it's just tofu. And then right here we have something very similar, but it's got a base of peppers instead. Either one of these would be great. And most importantly, they give you that bright red color that you need for your char siu. So we're gonna go for a half cup of our fermented red bean curd. I'm gonna add a little bit of that red chili sauce in there as well. And this will allow us to skip that red food dye step. Now this is optional, so if you're not gonna do this, you might wanna use the food dye and you might wanna bulk up on the fish sauce. Next we have the Chinese five spice, so you get that star anise, you get the cinnamon, fennel, Szechuan peppercorns, all of that stuff going on. And we're gonna round things out with a quarter cup each of minced garlic and ginger. 
We are gonna finish this in the blender, so don't feel like you have to go super fine on this. Just a rough quarter cup minced garlic and ginger. Since we are gonna be using this in a glaze later on, I'm just gonna go ahead and peel off the skin of the ginger. You can do that with a small paring knife, with a spoon, with a peeler, whatever you got handy. All right, garlic's in, ginger's in, let's blitz it up. That smells good. Look at that color. Beautiful. Let's have a little taste. Mm. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is gonna be good. So now we're going into the brine or bucket for an overnight soak in our marinade. And before we add our marinade, I'm gonna pour off about a cup of this to save for glazing. And the rest goes in the bucket. So we'll just kind of massage that into the meat here. Got just enough to get about all five pounds of that pork butt in there. Let's lock the plate in place and throw it in the fridge. Now I started a batch last night, so we're gonna pull that out of the brinder bucket, get it ready to go onto the grill. All right, so as this comes out, we're just gonna remove some excess marinade from the surface. You can see we've got that great red color on the surface there. And then even if you take a closer look here, that pink is starting to lighten up a little bit. So we're getting a little bit, a little bit of that acidity working on the pork as well. So we can throw these in just like they are, but uh, we also have another opportunity to add a little bit more flavor here. So as I finish kind of getting the excess marinade off the surface, we're gonna talk about seasoning the surface here with a little barbecue rub. When we think about what we could really add to this by adding a barbecue rub, uh, we look at a rub like this Yardbird by Plowboys and what it has to offer. That red color is really going to intensify on the surface, which we already know we want some more red color. We're not using red food dye today. So we get that out of the paprika and out of the chili powder. And then we kind of double down on some flavors that are already in there. With the chili flavor, we've got some garlic in there as well, some onion that we also have in the barbecue sauce that we're marinating in. So this is gonna just be a really nice little finishing on the outside, help us get a nice crust, and then we'll start to glaze toward the end to really get sticky here. We're gonna be roasting our pork on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill today at 350 degrees. We'll go right up here on the top rack. And we're going a little bit higher temperature today, so we're gonna stay away from the ambient heat coming off of the uh, deflector plate down there. And with that higher heat, we should get some really nice caramelization on the outside of our pork. Well, the pork's been roasting away for about 45 minutes at this point. We're looking at some great color developing. Our, our temperature's climbing. We're at like 160 in one of the specific ones that we've been temping, although that could range quite a bit depending on what muscle you're probing. Either way, 45 minutes in, we've got some good color. It's time to start putting some glaze on. So I've got our reserved marinade and sauce, and I'm just gonna add another probably quarter cup of honey to that, just so we really get that sticky effect that we're going for. And then we're just gonna come right over the top of each one of these pieces of pork, and give them a nice glaze with the sauce. All right, so we're just gonna close this back up and let this keep cooking away. You guys, we're getting really close here. We're about two hours into the cook. As you can see, we've got beautiful color on the outside. These are tacking up really nice. Some of these are ready to come off. Some of them need just a little bit more time, but we're gonna give all of them one last glaze before we finish. Looks good. All right, well, we've let these rest for just about five or 10 minutes now, not too long. Just gonna slice in here, see what we got. Nice, look at all that juice in there. It won't squeeze too hard. 
Great crust on the outside, beautiful red color. That nice sticky sweet exterior. Oh yeah. Taking on all the flavor of that marinade. I mean, you're getting the sweet, you're getting the savor, you're getting that funky umami from our fish sauce, from the red bean curd. Incredible. And that texture is just right at 195. I mean, it's still got a little bit of tug. It's not falling apart, but it's so tender and juicy. And then that added smoke just kind of tops everything off. You could eat this right off the cutting board all night. You could also serve this right on top of some rice. Maybe throw a little green onion there right on top. Or we could just chop these down and eat them up in some lettuce wraps. That's the way to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.